Hi, I'm Pastor Dave Gaiman from Christ Lutheran in Norfolk. We're glad you could join us today for our worship service, especially if you're seeing it for the first time. Today, after our first song, we have a time of confession and forgiveness. And we know that Jesus promises that when those words are spoken of forgiveness, they're just as if Jesus was speaking them himself. begin our service by remembering our baptism into Christ with the invocation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come together, let us confess our sins together. Spirit of truth, we confess we have not done our best to carry the good news of Jesus Christ beyond the walls of the church. Forgive our casual disregard of Jesus' command to go and make disciples. Forgive us for not using faithfully the powerful gifts of love and service you gave to the church on Pentecost. Renew a right spirit within us that we may carry the love and mercy of Christ from this place into our weekday community and to the world beyond. God sees us, he sees your repentant heart and he sent his son to bring you back to himself. As a called servant of God, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, good morning. Hey, we're back and we're doing a children's message today, um, which is a lot of fun, so we're glad to, glad to keep that rolling. Um, you know, in our reading today, um, Jesus says, fear not, right? He says, don't be afraid. Fear not, Keep, keeps on saying that for us. And so as kids, the first thing I thought of was riding a bike, right? That's hard to learn uh, when, you're, when you're a little kid. And this is a pretty little bike here too. But the thing that we have here on our bike is training wheels, right? You've got those training wheels on and that makes you feel safe. And uh, when you're 
where where you're a kid, that's pretty nice to do that um, when you're growing up. But then there comes a day when it's like, let's give it a shot. Let's do it without the training wheels. And when I was a kid, I think my dad, my dad helped me, you know, just like fathers do on Father's Day. And they'd probably be willing to kind of help their kids along and run alongside them. Um, and that was, that felt pretty nice too, didn't it? To have your, your dad, or maybe it was your brother, older brother and sister who would maybe even help you um, start to learn to ride that bike. And um, that was really great that you had that sense where you didn't need to be afraid because he was right there and he was helping you along the way. Well, I have good news for you. And that is your father in heaven won't go away. You won't have to ride the bike by yourself in your life. You won't have to live your life as a Christian and as a, a little child on your own because God the Father will always be there. He'll always be right next to you in case you get close to falling and he can grab you and protect you at those times. Being a follower of Jesus is not always easy, but God the Father protects us and we can ride into life with all the confidence and all the bravery that we could ever muster because God's with us and he's taking care of us. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you that you're with us always. We thank you that you're protecting us from all harm, not only physically, but in our hearts and minds and from danger. Lord, help strengthen our faith. Help us be brave as we go out into the world and share the truth about your love in every way. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is from Jeremiah chapter 20, beginning at verse 7. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side, Denounce him. Let us denounce him. Say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind. Let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third reading, the text for the sermon for today, is from Matthew chapter 10 verse 5a and beginning at verse 21. These 12 Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go, nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and the children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, Flee to the next, for truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. 
And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. Therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever been brave just for brave's sake? Like maybe a friend dared you to do something. Not something illegal or not something that was wrong, but something kind of silly, like maybe dared to get, eat a worm or dared to ride one of the scariest roller coasters or dared to tell a girl that you liked her. There are, there are times in our lives where we want to be brave and when we need to be brave. Sometimes we want to be brave for our children. And as a father, and maybe some of your, you fathers out there have thought about different times where you needed to be brave for your children. You needed to be brave when someone was hurt. You needed to make everyone try to feel like they're safe um, when they're possibly going to be in danger. And I don't know about other fathers, but sometimes I feel like I'm kind of just as scared as everybody else, but it's my job to be brave. It's my job to say the things that bring peace. It's my job to do the things that bring security and safety to others. There are times in our lives other, when we need to be brave. Maybe it's a job interview. Maybe it is telling a friend something that's hard for them to hear. Maybe it's doing some public speaking and doing a presentation. There are all kinds of times in our lives where we need to be brave. And sometimes one of the best days to be brave are the days when we're doing something for the very first time. There's almost nothing better, better than seeing grandma water skiing for the first time. That kind of adventurous spirit is exactly what we need to have as Christians and as just people in this world. We need to be brave enough to stand up for what we believe and speak that truth to others, to that truth to others in love and care, not with the hopes of hurting them, or not with the hopes of making things fair and right, but just to tell them the truth and to help them and to help others around us. In our text today, Jesus is asking us to be brave. He's asking us to go out into the world and share what's on our hearts and on our minds with our faith in Jesus. The things that are important to us, we need to be able to speak up and speak out in this world. It's a dangerous mission to go on. There's all kinds of things that, that can happen to us when we share what we really believe. Because maybe when we're sitting in that room or standing in that group, we're the only one who believes what we believe and everyone else thinks something different. Everyone else is thinking what's popular and we're thinking what's not popular. Jesus helps us to not be afraid as we walk into this world where other people are not like us. Jesus says in this passage, in the various verses here, he says, so have no fear of them and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Fear not. We're going to face resistance um, as Christians. We're going to face resistance when we're standing up for something that we believe in that, that is the truth. In a physical way, 
people around the world are suffering persecution because they're Christians. They might be beaten, they might be sent to prison, they might literally be killed. But in our context, in our culture, in the U.S., we also are facing death because of what we say and what we believe. We're facing death of relationships. Because if we say what we really believe, we're risking to lose friends at work. We're risking to, to lose friends um, that may be very close to us. And we're risking to even lose family members. Lose family members in that relationship could be cut off. That relationship could die between family, friends, and coworkers. Jesus says, and he t- tells the people that brother will deliver brother over to death, and that the father, his child, and the children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. In a kind of metaphorical way, family members can be divided, and that relationship can be put to death in this, in this world especially when we mention topics that are hot in our culture today. In our culture, it's very popular to let sins be acceptable. Sexual sins, hurtful sins, and covetous sins. There's a whole list of things in our culture that most people think are okay, but in reality, they're hurtful to others and ourselves. As we stand up for the truth, as we speak the truth in love, in care for others, unfortunately, they're going to see us as enemies. Unfortunately, they're going to see us as those who hate them for what they're doing, when in reality, we're trying to love them and to show them Jesus' forgiveness for them as well. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Our goal as we go on this dangerous mission is to bring salvation to people. That's the goal. It's not just to say that we're right. It's not just to say that we know what we're talking about. It's to say that Jesus loves the world and died for each person around us. But in fact, we do have that persecution that we face. It's easy in our, we're in our context when we're in church or we're surrounded by Christian friends in a Bible study or just in conversation to talk about the things that we believe in. That's kind of like we're we're in a kind of like a dark place where other people can't see what we really believe. And that's what Jesus is getting at when he says, when the things that I tell you in the dark to just the disciples, you're supposed to say in the light, out in the world. The things that you hear whispered, the things that we talk about in church that are the, what we believe in, in Jesus, those things we can proclaim from the housetops. We can be brave to go out in our world And there will be opportunities where we can say what we really believe, where we can stand up for the truth, and we can stand up for love and care for each person. We're not going to have it much easier than Jesus did. We're going to face similar persecutions and similar problems. When Jesus went to the cross, he suffered persecution. He went to the cross to sacrifice his life for the sins of the world. He went to the cross because he loved others. But yet, people continued to persecute him. He was beaten. He was tortured. And he did die for you and for me. That is the result of telling the truth. Because what happens to truth tellers is that they will be hated for telling people what is for their, be- 
for their benefit. We could be like Peter. Unfortunately, when Jesus went to the cross, he denied who Jesus, that he was with Jesus and that he was following Jesus. That's just about the worst thing that we could do in the context of this passage that we're being told to be brave today. Peter realized his mistake. He realized his failure and he wept bitterly. The good news is Jesus came to him after he rose from the dead and he forgave Peter. He forgave Peter for denying him and he told Peter to go out into the world and be his disciple once again. We have failed to stand up for what we believe. We have failed to tell people what's really on our hearts and minds. But Jesus sends us out today. He sends us out and says, be brave, share the truth, and share my love. Jesus was the only one who knew the truth. Jesus was the only one that knew that he was going to go suffer and die for the sins of the world. Jesus was the only one who knew that he was going to rise from the dead. Everyone else thought something differently. Everyone else didn't accept that truth for themselves. But Jesus willingly went forward because of the love that he had for others. In the world that we live in today, God wants us to know that we, like Peter, are essential personnel. God doesn't technically need us to be in his kingdom, but he treats us with the same value as if he did need us to be on his team. God loves us and he values us so much. You know, as a father wants to be brave and wishes that he could even in times of crisis protect his children and protect his wife, that is what God actually does in our lives. He actually does protect us from danger. Yes, we will suffer, suffer things physically, we'll suffer things as our relationships get broken, but Jesus protects us from the devil and from sin. God knows that we are going to not be put to an end. Maybe our lives will come to an end, but we won't be put to an end. God will protect us and he will give us eternal life in the end. Be brave and proclaim that you believe in Jesus as the Savior. Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Be brave, not for just brave's sake, but be brave because God the Father is watching over you. Be brave because you have a part to play in God's kingdom. Be brave because it's just that important that others will hear the truth and know that they are loved and know that they have a place in heaven just like you do. We live as Christ. We go through lots of different kinds of crises. Even just this pandemic is a crisis of sorts. But we know that the real message of hope and the real message of joy is that Jesus will take us into heaven one day. That's how brave we can be at any point in our lives to share that truth of God's love for you and me. Amen. We join together speaking our confession with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. And he will come again to, with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may God the Father strengthen us for service in his kingdom. May Christ's love motivate us to live out our faith in all of our callings and relationships. May the Holy Spirit give us grace to go out with boldness to witness to the world what we have seen and heard this day. Amen. Again, thanks for worshiping with Christ Lutheran today. We pray that you've experienced God's love and forgiveness. If you don't know Jesus and you want to find out more about him and how he invites you to be his child in baptism, don't be afraid to contact us and talk about it. If you'd like to support our ministry or find out more about Christ Lutheran, you can go to our website at clnorfolk.org. God's peace, and we'll see you next time. Greetings from Christ Lutheran Church. We have some exciting news about Vacation Bible School this summer. It will go live. The Rocky Railway invites you to come from July 27th through the 29th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Supper will be available to those who are unable to eat before they come, and supper will begin at 5.30. You can go to the Christ Lutheran Church website and register your child. Any child entering preschool through entering sixth grade this fall is welcome to register to attend. Make sure that the preschoolers are potty trained. If you are a Christ Lutheran Church member and you would like to volunteer to help, there is a link on our website where you can go and register information there. Uh, if you have questions, you can always call the office or check the website. Our office does have paper information uh, that you can fill out if you don't want to fill out anything online. We will be following the COVID-19 guidelines uh, while your children are attending Vacation Bible School. If you are uncomfortable with sending them due to concerns from the coronavirus, we do have an option on the website that you can click and we can get a informational packet to you uh, where you can do Vacation Bible School at home. Please let us know if you have any questions and we would love to have you here. Thanks.